Okay, so in this step, what we're going to be doing is setting about getting some foliage into the scene. So to do that, in this video, we'll be spending most of the time setting up the material that we're going to place on our grass because it's probably the most complicated material that we'll have in this entire sort of tutorial. So we do need to spend a bit of time on it. There's quite a lot going on. But before we can do any of that, we need to get in the assets that we need. So there's some geometry for this. Okay, so let's just open up the folder. Okay, so the geometry is called grassclump.fbx. So we're going to drop that into our geometry folder. Okay, and the same sort of things will apply. We don't need any collision on this one uh, because we want to be able to run through this because it's, um, it's grass. And if you bumped into every bit of grass, it wouldn't be a fun game to play. Uh, and everything else can stay at the default import options there. So we'll import that. So that's our grass clump. And then we've got a couple of texture files that we need to bring in for this as well. And it's just this grass clump diffuse and grass clump normal. We're just going to use those two. So we'll bring those into our textures folder. And as always, if you want to use the same assets that I'm using, follow the link in the description and you'll get instructions on how to do that. Otherwise, you can create your own or you can find your own assets elsewhere. That's fine. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've brought in. So in the geometry folder, this is our grass clump. And grass in games has to be really efficient. So you don't work with individual blades of grass. You have these sort of planes here. You see they're one-sided. So they only show up when you're looking at them in certain directions. But we'll make them two-sided using the material later. So this is pretty much what it looks like. So you can see I've made it out of four planes. I think there's one here, one going up and down there. There's one there and one there. So they're all going in slightly different directions. Okay, so that's what this is all about. At the moment, this has just got the world grid material on there. There's not a lot going on with it really, but we'll just move that over because I want to be able to come back to this to see what effect the grass is having on it before we start painting in the scene when we get the material in there. So what we then need to do is we're going to go into our materials folder and we are going to create a new material. I'm going to call this one M underscore grass master and the reason i've added the master to this is because this is going to be an instance material so this is going to be like the master will hold all of our different settings and it'll be the instance that we apply to everything so let's open this up here we are so first thing we're going to do is just move the main node over there because we, we want the space available and we're actually going to change a few settings in the details uh, so we've not done this for any of the previous materials but we want this one to behave differently because this has got um, an opacity mask on it. So we're going to be applying a flat image to our grass, but we want the outline to kind of, or, or the, the digital image around the outline to disappear. So we're going to use an opacity mask, but you can see opacity mask is not available to us. So we need to jump into here and make it available to us. So the blend mode is set to opaque and we're going to change that to masked. And that opens up opacity mask to us, lovely. We're also going to change the shading model from default lit to two-sided foliage, which will make our foliage two-sided and behave like foliage. So we'll turn that on. You'll also see that that opens up a few other um, options on this main material node here. We do want it to be two-sided. We'll give that a tick. And I believe that's everything we need to change on here right now. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now we need to bring in the textures and do some other crazy material magic to make this look oh super sexy so anyway the first thing is two texture samples so i'm holding t and left clicking okay so this first one is going to be our grass clump diffuse there it is and this one here is going to be our grass clump normal there that one is too so we're going to plug these in for now but we're actually going to bring in other nodes and disconnect them anyway as we go but i just want to know where i am at the moment so i'm going to plug that into base color and normal goes into normal so far so good okay so now what i want to do is kind of finish working on the base color so what i want to be able to do is to be able to change the color of the grass in the instance and I'm going to do that by creating another node that I can add a color and multiply that with the, the texture sample that I brought in. 
So, to do that, what I'm going to do is create a vector parameter. Well, that says vector. <laughs> That's not right. So this vector parameter here is the one I want. And I'm going to call this tint because I will use it to tint the color. Okay, so far so good. So I'm just going to bring that up there, I think, for now. And what I'm also going to do is set the default color of this to white. So I'm just going to drag that bad boy up there. Otherwise, it'll have too much of an impact on, on the grass to start with. And then I want a multiply node. So I'm going to hold M and left click to create that node. So I want my tint to go into A. It doesn't really matter which way around I do these. I'm just doing them based on what order they appear in. I'm going to put the texture sample into B. And then the result of that is going to go into base color. Lovely. So that's that happening but if you look at this it doesn't look right at the moment the alpha channel isn't doing anything and we need it to be doing something to get the outline going on and the way that i've built this texture um, is that there's an alpha channel on it that's what this output here represents so just to get us going if we take this output here and put it into the opacity mask when this updates you'll see that we now get an outline on the grass which is really polygon saving magic. Oh, there you go, look at that beauty. So that's good, we're now making some progress. Okay, the next thing I want to do is get some parameters in for the specular and the roughness so I can change those in the instance later. So we're gonna have a couple of scalar parameters. So I'll have one here that's gonna go into the specular. And we're gonna name this specular. Specular. Yeah, that's good. Good spelling, Shane. And we're also going to have another um, scalar. And this little chap is going to go into the roughness. Pium. And I'm going to call it roughness. There we go. So now I'll be able to change those and get them how I like in my material instance. Okay, the next thing I'm going to set up is this subsurface color. And what this does is it sort of represents like the way that light can pass through foliage. So if you think about um, leaves on a tree, some light will pass through it. Um, and the subsurface color is all about that. What we're gonna do is we are going to use our original color here plus the tint. So we're gonna come out of this multiply and we're gonna multiply it by a number so we can change the strength of the subsurface. So to do that, we'll get a multiply going on down here multiply that's not how you spell multiply oh dear okay so i know that the result of that's going into subsurface color okay i want another scalar and this scalar is going to plug into b of this multiply and i'm going to call this one subsurface strength And again, that's something that I will be able to change in my instance, which I want. And so what I'll do is I'll get another copy of this color that's gonna be mixed up here, and that's gonna go into A. So basically what I'm saying is I want this color, and I want the, the option to be able to make it stronger if I want to. And the reason I want that option in there is because the subsurface color is weak. It'll be quite dark by default, and we're really gonna to need to give it some more strength, otherwise it looks weird. Okay, so that's subsurface strength. I'm happy with that. The next thing I want to set up is based on um, the culling distance of the grass when we put it in there. So I've just had a little play around with this. I've rehearsed this step before I put it into the tutorial. And in 4.14, uh, which is the version before the one I'm using, um, the, the grass, when you change the culling distance, would fade in. Uh, and that doesn't happen by default anymore. It just pops in in big blocks. It's really ugly. And epic have changed the way that the engine works so we need to add a new node into the material to enable that to happen which we'll do now and the node is called so we do a right click here it's called a per instance fade amount there it is and it comes in in this beautiful red thing and all we need to do is multiply it by this alpha channel here to get it to work so we're going to put in another multiply There it is. So this fade amount is going to go into B. 
the alpha channel is going to go into A and then the result is going to plug into our opacity mask. So we're bypassing the connection we already have, we're just replacing it like that. So that means that at whatever distance we set for the culling distance of the grass, it'll fade in nice and gradually per instance rather than just throwing in like 50 grass clumps at once uh, and it won't be as jarring. So that's that bit set up, I'm happy with that. And the last thing I'm going to do is try and comment this up a little bit so that I know what's what. So my specular and roughness are already labelled, I don't need to do that. Um, but these two here are to do with my subsurface strength. So, just so that I can identify those. Um, my colour is this, well, yeah, these three nodes here. Um, so I'm going to comment those as base color and yes I'm definitely using the UK spelling of color okay the per instance fade amount uh, I'm not going to comment that I'm not going to comment normal so just those two there are the kind of the complicated ones I think okay and that will do it for now now we are going to nip back into this material in a minute to add the effect of wind but I want to show you what the grass looks like with and without so at the moment what we need to do is save this super now that that's saved we can assign it to our grass clump so what do we call it grass grass master there it is so this is now what the grass looks like when we apply that material so it's not bad I'll be honest with you this is some grass that I made extremely quickly and I'm not massively proud of it, but it will do a job. So at the moment, because we haven't changed anything on the subsurface color, that's what this horrible dark backside of it looks like. But when we change those values, they'll look much brighter and it'll look really good. So this is what it looks like by default. What I want to do now is get some wind kind of just tickling the tops of this. So we're going to go back into the material to enable that. Okay, we're just going to build that part of the material in some space down here. So the main node that we're going to use for this one, we'll just right click, is called a simple grass wind. It's just that one there at the bottom. Here it is. And we're going to need to set up some parameters to plug into this. So we're going to need a few scalars. So one there. We'll have another scalar. And one there. I'm just going to plug them into these top two on the simple grass wind node and we're going to name them whatever we've plugged them into so that we can change them in the instance when we want to so we can make the grass um, weaker or stronger actually in the level in the editor itself so that's quite nifty so this one's going to be called wind intensity yep very good have I spelled that correctly <laughs> no in in Tesnity behave in ten city. Whew, no typos. Okay, and this one is going to be called wind weight. Beautiful. Okay, I'm just going to put a constant of zero into the additional um, WPO, which is world position offset. And then what we need to do is we could plug the result into this world position offset. And I want to show you what this looks like now, and then we're going to control the wind a little bit more. Um, so let's just by default, we're gonna set the default value of these to three, let's say. And you should then see that this starts waving around, going all crazy. So that will do for now. And we're just going to save this. And then we'll check out what it looks like on our geometry to see what the wind's doing. Okay, so let's move over. Right. You could argue that the wind's a little bit strong. So we need to rein that in just a touch. Okay, so what I've done is I've typed in 0 0.5 as the default value for these two. So we'll save that and see if that looks less crazy on the geometry because that, that was not what we were going for. 
Okay, so that's done saving. Let's see if that looks a bit better. Yes, it does. Okay, so you can see that this is now sort of tickling the grass. It looks kind of nice, but what I don't like is that it's happening too much at the bottom. Um, we kind of want the bottom to stay still because that's connected to the ground, isn't it? That shouldn't be wobbling around really. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this by some vertex color that I, I did in the actual mesh editor. So in Maya, what I did is I painted uh, a vertex color on the bottom of this mesh of black. So it's black at the bottom and it's red at the top. And what we're going to do is multiply the result of the wind by the vertex color red. So what we're saying is that whenever you see red, make the effect of the wind stronger. If you don't see any red at all, which is the black at the bottom, don't do anything. So let's set that up. So we're going to create a vertex color, which is this guy here. And I'll just put that there. And we're going to multiply the result of our wind by vertex color red. As I said, I've set this up to work on the red vertex color channel. So we're going to put that into there. And then we'll plug the result of that into the world position offset. Okay, so we're going to hit save on that. And when that's done, we're going to go back into grass clump and then the bottom of that, that grass will stay put. Okay, so let's see if I've been successful. So into grass clump. Yeah, so you can see now the bottom of this stays put. Mwah, beautiful. Right, so that's pretty much the material built. Looks nice, doesn't it? We've done really well there. So we can now think about getting our grass put into the level ready for painting around the scene using the foliage tool, which is going to be fun. I think it's fun. Okay, so let's get this set up. Right, so the last thing we need to do is create a material instance of our grass master material. So let's right click on this, create material instance, and it's going to be called M grass. We'll get rid of master. And we're just going to leave in instance M grass underscore instance. Good. We're now going to go back into our clumpy clumpy grass. And we're going to change that. So from grass master to grass instance. Which is good. So we'll save that. And what we're now going to do is we'll open this instance so we can see it. Although maybe not that big. So now we can see all the parameters that we've set up. And I'm also going to drop just one piece of this grass into the level so we can see what we can do with it. So I'm just going to come sort of over here so we can see it against the other, the background of the other grass, if you will. So let's go to geometry. Here's our grassy clump. I'm going to drop that in like so. And I'm just going to deselect it by pressing escape. In fact, let me just click on it, press F. So this is now the focus of our scene. So you can see at the moment, there's all kind of horrible blackness going on on one side of it, which I don't like. So we are going to need to do some stuff to make this look better. Before I do though, because earlier in this series, in this tutorial, um, when I started messing with an instance, it kept crashing. So to save me some heartache, I'm going to click on save all before I do that. And then if it does crash, at least I can reopen it and I won't be as angry. Okay, so here we go. Let's play with some of our, um, some of the things that we changed. So the first thing I'm gonna to want to do is change the subsurface strength. And I think four worked for me quite well earlier. There we go. So that's nice. What it's also got going on at the moment in this one is shadowing, which will turn off later, but it's okay for now. Okay, the roughness and the specular, I want both to be set to one. Okay, I think I'm happy with the wind for now. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is that if we want to, we can use the tint to try and match the color of the grass to the grass below it so it doesn't stand out as much. So we can click on this bit here and as you see, as I drag this around, it kind of changes the color. So I can desaturate it a little bit if I want to take it towards the 
the browny red scale if I want. And as long as I don't go too far with it, it'll come out pretty nice. And just kind of brownify it a little bit. If if brownify is a word, of course. So we can mess around with all that. So that that's pretty nice. I'm happy with that. We'll go to OK and we need to save that just for now. Lovely. Okay, so what we're gonna worry about next is painting this using the foliage tool all around our level. So it'll really start to fill this up. It'll start to look ace. So join me in the next step to fill your level up with grass. I will see you there. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.